Yo, what it is, YouTube? It's your boy Nitsy coming back with another Bulls Eye of a tutorial here today. Today, I wanted to talk about tubes, you know, to get a little understanding of how important tubes are to like kind of like the history of making music and how you can use it to give you a little bit of advantage with your vocals, helping them sit inside the two track beat, how to also use them as kind of like a de harsher as well, or to something to just really just take the edge off of the digital, um, you know, recordings that sometimes might just feel a little bit of cold. So, let's look at this right away. If you guys do have any more comments or questions, drop it down. Down below we more than happy to get to it so we have two um you know plugins that we're going to look at today which is the magma bb tube as well as the uh, uh sound toys little radiator so i'm going to go over a couple different ways that i like to use it but the very first thing that we got to understand too is like the history of tubes so you got something like uh you know the little radiator which is um, modeled after something like an all tech mixer so you know back in the days when they had them little microphones a lot of those microphones required you know a certain amount of power just kind of like anything else like a tv or a laptop it requires power so they would use something like an Altec mixer to get some of that power and with the Altec mixer it had it was like loaded with tubes and it was really good because it really gave a very very um you know appropriate sound for any type of microphone or any source that they used to put through it and it was really good for you know the sound of like Motown etc like that so you, as you can see right here I think he's inside of Motown studios and they was using something like an Altec mixer so um you know that's amazing that the sound toys little radiator gives us that and then let's look at how um, something like a, a tube was always used to uh, do compression. So sometimes tubes been used to do compression. Sometimes they've been used from like amplification, like how I said with the microphone, you know, powering that bit. You f so pretty much we have something like um, the Fairchild 670. So with the Fairchild 670, it got transformers and tubes in it. That's like a very, uh, you know, co um, combination. It's kind of like uh, peanut butter and jelly you know, like transformers and tubes, they kind of go like together a lot, what I'm paying attention to with the gear. So the Fairchild, you know, is loaded with a lot of tubes. And sometimes with something like a Fairchild, you know, the actual tubes are doing the actual compression itself. Okay, and the Fairchild is known for being very musical. It's one of the very first um, broadcasting uh, type of compressors. And the thing about the Fairchild too is that sometimes they can give you a little bit of brightness. So that's what I like to do sometimes. Sometimes I like to pop out a Fairchild and just use the Fairchild and just run like the vocal through it to give me a little bit more brightness rather than using something like boosting EQ. You should try it out. The next thing after that, you know, I wanted to look at something like a LA-2A, one of the very first, um, you know, compressors as well. But the difference between this one and the um, Fairchild is the Fairchild uses the tubes to do compression, but the LA-2A just use it, uses it in like, you know, the amplification circuit. So that means like make it louder, like the megaphone part pretty much, you know. The actual way that uh, LA-2A does um, the compression is through light. It got an optical component in that bit. So when the signal come through, like it starts to get brighter and brighter and brighter. And to do the compression like that very interesting to think about it too because um sometimes people might say oh a la2a is a tube compressor you know like you know but it's really an optical compressor that got tubes in the inside and the outside doing you know like i said the megaphone making it louder then after that let's look at something very interesting which is the cl1b you know a lot of people like that one and it, it's called the tube tech compressor but even though they call it the tube tech compressor you know it uses the tubes just for the amplification it don't use the tubes to actually do the compression you know a, a compressor that uses tubes to do the compression that's called a Verimu compressor that's the Fairchild you feel me or the Abbey Road RS124 that's the, like you know that uses the tube to do compression but something like the um, you know the CL1B it still uses the light the optical component to do the compression but they still call it a tube tech so that's why I kind of wanted to go over it a little bit today so I could get a better understanding and this one right here is pretty easy because um this one right here is pretty interesting because this is a 500 series version of the cl1b which that's so crazy i never even know they made something like that and uh you know honestly i feel like they should pr probably run that back again one thing about you know these type of tube compressors too is that they like to take up a lot of space like i was in the studio with a real la2a that thing is so big um i've never seen a cl1b in real life but i would assume it's, it's just just as big and that's the thing about it sometimes people be trying to push you push you push you for this tube gear but they're not telling you that yo you know like these things are huge and they're not very ergonomic that's the word you know ergonomic you know a home studio don't got as much space as a pro studio so sometimes you might run into a situation where you don't got no space so it's always important to know about you know the size and everything like that but i think they should run this one back definitely i think a lot of people would um definitely cut that cl1b 500 series i probably would so all right let's jump right into the video let's listen to some music niggas trying to network but i only work for my network my head hurt i'm trying to pinpoint how the odds work i feel no hurt White shirt, I'm tryna come up like I'm Big Worm Bitch, I'm lit like a concert Bad bitch, let me insert Withdrawals, I'm ducking Cause I don't stop for 
the ops, I'ma take off, I'm serving Migos across the street, niggas know that's my people, not to be confused with the other side, suicide trying to run no, I love my life, can't lose that, I've been in my zone for too long, I gotta use that, like the kid back on my waist. All right, so that's the music that we got here. And let's look at this. So uh, originally when I had recorded this track, I had felt like, okay, cool. You know, it sounded very good, but I wanted to add a little bit more life. I wanted to help the music really become cohesive. Like when I'm mix making music, I kind of see it like a whole community, you know, like the lead vocal is like one citizen, the background vocals, that's another citizen. You know, everybody's got, is pretty much like, a, you know, a, a person who living in the community, the whole song, like a community. And one thing about communities that they're supposed to work off each other, you know, like everybody got a job everybody got a thing that they do they got their own motion so i always try to make everything kind of interact with it but sometimes when you record you know like a digital signal sometimes you could just feel like you know it's like uh something that's sitting on top of it rather than inside the beat it's not inside the pocket so i had used something like the um magma bb tube so this is very interesting you know tubes have two ways of you know working so there's something called uh a pencil tube and a trial tube those are kind of like the most common type of tubes yeah and with something like the, um, you know, the uh, trio tube, I remember it like this. Are you trying to even get fat? Because, you know, the trio tubes, they add even order harmonics that help make a signal sound fat. But then you got something like a pento tube. And how I remember it is odd pent up anger. So that's like a type of tube that if you push it really hard, it will start to create third order harmonics that will make that bit sound a little bit more angry, a little bit more aggressive. But with BB tubes, they make it real easy. Um, they don't say what type of tubes that they're modeling, but pretty much, you know, this one is like the, the good boy and this one kind of like the bad boy. So usually I like to use something like beauty to help give the vocal a little bit of gloss a little bit of sheen just to help it really um you know stand out inside of the track so let's listen niggas trying to network but i only work for my network my head hurt i'm trying to pinpoint how the eyes work i feel no hurt white shirt i'm trying to come up like i'm big worm bitch i'm lit like a concert bad bitch let me insert withdrawals i'm ducking because i don't stop for the ops i'ma take off i'm serving migos across the street niggas know so that's kind of pretty much what um you know something like beauty will do it's kind of like the good part of tube saturation where it will give some of that gloss in the top end so let's kind of like visualize this i'm gonna do a real quick drawing i'm not the best artist ever but i kind of want to show you guys um you know kind of like what it is so um let me see this real quick let me clear this out so this is kind of like your audio signal right here like originally when you recorded inside of the doll you know it's kind of precise it's accurate you know it's like a, a camera taking a picture all the pixels are there but when you add something like saturation what it kind of does is something like this it's kind of like when you go to the barber shop and you get a haircut real quick your hair come in that bit rough but then, you know, like after the time the haircut is over, like, you know, your hair is a little bit more smooth. So that's kind of what is like happening to your audio signal. So sorry about my, you know, my little picture, but pretty much this, this is what kind of happened. And, you know, with saturation, there's kind of like a form of soft clipping, essentially kind of like a smoothing off of the transients as well. So this is usually like the signal that you get when you record in digital. You know, it's just pretty much perfect. It's precise, it's accurate, it's what you gave it. But usually sometimes when you're mixing, you might want to use a little something like tube saturation to help it give that a little bit of that kind of softening. Like when you make a piece of chicken and you just don't slap it right on the grill, you know, you got to marinate it, you got to baste that bit. You feel me? You got to do all the little preparations to get it nice and tender and feeling good, you know? So um, that's pretty much what something like Beauty will do. All right, cool. Next thing, I use something like a little radiator, radiator in this situation to help tame the harshness of my background vocal. So that's coming back to what I was just showing you. You know, sometimes when you record a digital signal, it could be perfect, a perfect line, a straight line, but that's literally not how life is. You know, people don't walk in a straight line, you know, we kind of wobble a little bit to the side. So that's what I'm always trying to bring into the music, you know, a little bit of that real life characteristic. So let's look at the background vocals. You know, I bust them out to the same ox and all I do was throw a little, um, a little radiator on it. And, you know, I used a little bit of heat, a little pull it back, but just listen to how it kind of really just helped take the edge off of the background vocals it really just told the background vocal hold up bro just chill real quick you feel me you, you you tripping you a little bit too you feel me so just listen to it niggas trying to network but i only work for my net worth my head hurt i'm trying to pinpoint how the eyes work i feel no hurt white shirt i'm trying to come up like i'm big worm bitch i'm lit like a concert bad bitch let me insert withdrawals i'm ducking because i don't stop for the ops i'ma take off i'm serving migos like i'm big worm bitch i'm lit like a concert bad bitch let me insert withdrawals i'm ducking because i don't stop for the ops i'ma take
take off. I'm serving me goes across the street. So listen to when it's them concert take off, serving me goes the suicides. Like when he starts getting into all them S's and all the consonants, Kasumi, like all of that stuff. It's, it really kind of just sounds too accurate, too, just too much energy. So I like to use something like the little radiator to kind of smooth and off the audio signal a little bit. And it kind of does it in a deharshing method. So that's why sometimes I be trying to tell y'all, yeah, you got to understand, you know, the um, components inside of the plugins that y'all using, because that will also give you kind of like an advantage to where you might not have to do so much compression because maybe you throw on the tape saturator or tube saturator or something like that that's really going to do a little bit of the effect for you essentially with all of them old throwback hardware um units too as well you know the components was actually doing compression too you know the, when the audio signal hits some of these parts like a tube a transformer all of that you know there's like a resistance that comes up against the against it so pretty much like a form of like wave shaping is kind of happening just very subtle where it kind of smooths it off for you that's why people like the la2a that's why people like the fairchild that's why even to, to this day they still modeling that plug-in after how many years about like almost like 60 70 years they're still modeling it just because you know what it what it does to audio signal is very natural and it, it just reminds us of like humanity you feel me smoothness roundness non-linearities you know nobody's perfect so it's kind of crazy to try to get a perfect vocal sound you know you know perfection is something that you can only have for like half a second you know in a song but after that you when you're on the next song it's, it's gone you starting back at zero again but that's kind of what made music fun to me though and the last thing i like to use that bit for is um you know for something like a parallel distortion type a situation to add a little bit more grit but sometimes when you just use something like beast and you add more grit because it gives a point of reference it kind of makes it sound brighter in my opinion that's kind of how i hear it crazy thing about it it's like if they thought it was dirty but then i throw a, a piece of dirt at them now they be like oh you know what that's actually not dirty that's actually clean because now i got a point of reference so let's listen to how i was using the bb2 in parallel it was trying to network but I only work for my network. My head hurt. I'm trying to pinpoint how the odds work. I feel no hurt. White shirt. I'm trying to come up like I'm Big Worm. Bitch, I'm lit like a concert. Bad bitch, let me insert. Withdrawals. I'm ducking because I don't stop for the ops. I'm a takeoff. I'm serving Migos across the street. Niggas know that's my people. Not to be confused with the other side. Suicide trying to run no. I love my life. Can't lose that. I've been in my zone for too long. I got to use that. Like the kid back on my waist. I move in silence and I soak up the game. It ain't free. I'm finessing my way. I'm too solid. No comp so the reason why I would use something like a beast in parallel in a situation like this, because this is like a swag song, but you know, you don't want the rapper to be going too hard on the beat like this. Ah, da, 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 da. Like that's not a song for like, this like that. So sometimes you got to understand the vibe. You got to understand where the rapper's coming from. So I heard him rapping with all that swag, but I said, damn, we still need a little more impact, a little bit more energies. Cause he's still talking about that street life and everything like that. So I used a little bit of beast to add a little bit of that dirt. You know, the, if the people came out the dirt, sometimes you got to add a little dirt to their vocal. Cause that's a reflection of their life and what they went through so uh you know a couple other things that i like to use the bb tools for sometimes i like to throw it on the two track beat you know in a situation like this i did not use it usually the secret to getting a good sounding two track beat is to just pick the best two track beat pretty much and that will work out for you most of the time or i like to throw this on my master bus as well something like this or even the the little radiator sometimes i like to throw it on my master bus but that's the thing about um you know saturation it has a certain way that it acts on the low end frequencies too you know so that's something very important to always think about you know sometimes you could use it to spice up an 808 it'll make like a little bit of the note come out a little bit more and make it the 808 a little bit more um solid just because you know it kind of does have like a compression characteristic to it so it kind of do have like a squeezing very very subtle type of thing to it but this is pretty much the end of the video today i just want to talk about how i think tubes are pretty important and you know audio in general and the history of audio and everything like that so if y'all do got any more questions down below go ahead and drop it i'm more than happy to get to it don't forget to like comment and subscribe appreciate it now peace